Okay, freedom versus compulsion. In love, the paradox occurs that two beings become one and yet remain two. True love can never be manifest through coercion or compulsion. Only in freedom can it persist and endure. This is real important. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my, my belief about love is you either have it or you don't. You know, it's like, I also believe that if you're not living together, you're dying together. If you're not loving together, you're not living together. And if you're not living together, you're dying together. And it's time to move on. That may sound harsh, and it's not what most psychologists would recommend. But I believe this. Uh, life is short, and we're meant to have love in our life, and we're meant to be loving. And if we can't make it work, and if we're not having that relationship that's fulfilling in a, in a mutual way, it takes two. I'm not suggesting that, you know, it's all the other person. It takes two to make things not work or to work. But, but if it's worth saving, then it needs to be worked on. And if it's worth saving, that means that there has to be a reappraisal of how it can work. And it's not easy if it's only one person trying to make it work and the other's not. Um, by that I mean that you can come to things like this, talks like this, read books about love and relationships. You can go to counseling. But if you're going by yourself, it's a little lonely road. You know, it takes two, right? So my feeling is that there's got to be a mutuality of desire um, and openness for it to work. And uh, there has to be a little bit of maturity on both parts for it to work. And that, that's not always forthcoming, okay? Um, so anyway, so what I mean by you can't have coercion or compulsion, you know, I, I'm totally believing in that. I, I, I'm saying when it's over, it's over. If it's done, it's done. If it's not there, let's not pretend it's not. Let's not uh, do it for the kids' sake. You know, all that stuff, I've been through it. And I'm maybe not the best spokesperson for all this because I've been married a few times in my life. But I've had almost 80 years to do it in, so I guess that counts too. <laughs> anyway, so, so whatever that's worth. So anyway, so, okay, so only in freedom can it persist and endure. And that's how I believe about love, okay? You have to have uh, your independence, you have to feel free, you don't have to feel coerced. And um, you know, that coercion can come in a lot of forms, economic coercion. Uh, you know, if you leave me, you're going to be without, you know, I mean, that's powerful, you know what I mean? I've walked away from uh, uh, a marriage where, um, you know, <laughs> at a million dollar home, I gave it all up. I didn't care. I'd rather have my freedom and my heart back again. And then to be in a relationship that uh, there was less days of love than there was other. So we all have those decisions in our life to make. But what I'm saying is that it, it only can uh, achieve itself and be there if it's not through coercion or compulsion. Giving is the highest expression of potency. It's the very act of giving I experience my strength, my wealth, my power. This experience of heightened vitality and potency fills me with joy. I experience myself as overflowing, alive, hence as joyous. Giving is more joyous than receiving, not because it is a deprivation, but because it's the act of giving lies the experience of my aliveness. Does that all make sense to you? I, was, I went to Home Depot yesterday. I have stories after story. And I went to Home Depot and I went up and I was thinking about getting my wife a Polish sausage because they got those little stands outside of the Home Depot all the time. And I had already eaten, I wasn't hungry, but I thought about it. I thought maybe I'll bring her back a kielbasa or something. Because she likes that. And uh, while I'm standing there, there's a woman with her little child, a um, Hispanic woman, ordering a hot dog and some whatever, and a drink. And the man in back of hers, in front of me, an older man, he says to the vendor, I'll pay for that. And she looks up in shock, the young lady, and says, oh, no, no, no. And I looked over at her and I said, just say thank you and accept it graciously. It's a lot harder to receive than to give. I said, take it. And uh, he smiled and she smiled and he gave the, uh, then he said to the vendor, did she give you a tip? Of course he knew she didn't. So he puts the dollar in the, bu in the bucket, a little thing there, it's there for tips. And I looked at him and I s tapped him on the shoulder. I said, you know what? I said, that's really, really beautiful what you just did. I said, you know, I'd like to, uh, I said, are you a reader? That's what I said to him. 
He says, yeah, but I don't read fiction very much, but I read, you know, I like things that are not in fiction. I said, well, great, you would enjoy my book. I want to give you a gift. So he said, what? I said, yeah. He said, what's the book? And I said, my book. And he said, what's the name of it? I tell him the greatest story never told. He said, I think I've heard of that book somewhere. And I said, well, you should read it. You'll get a lot from it. And um, so I said, come with me to my car, and I'll give it to you. So he walked over to the car. We ended up talking. His name was Bailey. We ended up, it was like we were hugging each other at the end. You know, it's one of those kind of relationships you just know it's right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I mean, I touched his life. He touched mine. Mm -hmm. You know, we started telling stories. It was like two friends that hadn't seen each other for ages. We start filling each other in on our lives, you know. It's, you do that with people sometimes. You say, wow, I'm trying to catch up with you, you know. So, but everywhere you go in life, you know, I say every moment is filled with pregnant possibilities. But it only happens if you're loving. You know, my ex-wife didn't like that one. But anyway, so, so anyway, so whatever you, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, you have that opportunity to be loving and to touch people's lives. You're both lights of of light. You are. I know your spirits. Uh, uh, you, you know, you're a little tough, a little hardened, but you're both, you're both beautiful <laughs> souls. You know, you are, you are, you're a pair, you, you know. Yeah, I know, I know them, I know them. But <laughs> I, I got your numbers, girl. I got your numbers real well. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so, anyway, so where are we at? Giving the highest expression of potency, it's a way of giving, right? It is, really. And it's hard, to, it's hard to receive, though. I mean, I've always, that was my challenge in my life. Uh, people are giving and, and loving and, yeah. you know, and I, I, I still, I am still challenged by it sometimes. And, you know, Fabi's an example of that. She's always giving, 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 giving. She gives and gives and gives. And I, you know, I keep feeling, because I still deal with my own sense of my own worth, you know. And, uh, and I surely don't have any sense of... Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for that I deserve any of this, you know what I mean? It's, but it's still, I humbly accept it and learn to accept it and love it and be thankful for it. But anyway, so, love completes, fear competes. Love unifies you, you can't be in love, but you, have you ever been in hate? Think about that one now. Have you ever said I'm in hate? No, but you can be in love. I said I love you, I just don't like you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. I said I lost tons. That is very, I like that a lot. I like yeah, that. I like that. like you right now. Yeah. Yeah. We all have those moments, I yeah. know. Yeah. She has them with me and I have them with her. That's part of life, okay? Yeah. But that's a good way to look at it. I, I think it's a really uh, very mature way to address that. So love uh, merges and embraces without being, uh, and brings unity and wholeness. Love is the only thing when divided multiplies. Think about that. Fear and hate bring division, separation, and divorce. Mm -hmm. Okay? Have you noticed that one says they are in love, but they don't say, I'm in hate? You don't merge with hate. You can't. It's not a merging, unifying thing. Okay? Things to fear in love. Okay? You can have fear. You can have fear of uh, abandonment, fear of spiders, public speaking. Believe it or not, more people yeah. are afraid of public speaking than anything oh, else. Right? I am. Yeah? It's easy. You just look out there and visualize everybody's naked when it's easy. Exactly. Right. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> Somebody taught me that years ago. Said, yeah. Ron, if you really get embarrassed, and up, up tight up front. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of things to be fearful about in life, but where to start? We can only see change outside when we change inside. The relationships you have with yourself is the determining factor in your relationship with others, be it a lover or a husband or a wife. A man who loves himself loves his wife. That's a very powerful scripture. You can't love your wife unless you love yourself. The moments that I'm more unloving is when I'm not happy and I'm not fulfilled, don't feel I'm doing my thing, I'm not making enough money, I'm not doing this. It's all those things of self-worth come back and then I become a bear. Okay, and I, I know that, and she knows it. She's lived with me for 20 some years, 25, 26, and she knows me too well. And thank God she does, because she loves me despite that. Mm -hmm. So that's what, she's taught me more about love than all the books in the world could ever taught me of anything about love. She's an amazing woman. I've been very blessed. So a man who loves himself loves his wife, okay? Uh, all you ever asked me to, about is my feelings. 
<laughs> that doesn't make you feel. Yeah, that's a good psychologist, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let's understand this in a complex, more astrological way, maybe. And uh, every one of those symbols you see there make up the planet symbols. The circle with a point in the center is the sun. That centralized spirit is focused. It's become like, you know, everything's to the center. It's like a magnifying glass that brings it all to the focus, to the right, to the center. So that in the old days was called Ruach. And uh, it referred to the Holy Spirit. Holy men integrated or to be together, unified. Okay. Um, Nefesh was the soul. And uh, uh, when we talked about the soul, we're talking about the... Holy Ghost also. The Holy Spirit is right here. Okay, I'm in good spirits. I'm integrated in my spirits. My ghost, my Holy Ghost. Where do ghost dreams, visions come from? The subconscious mind. When I was in the Navy, I used to be involved in, I was really doing a lot of hypnosis. I was really, in, I've always been a student of the mind. Mm. And even in the Navy, I wanted to experiment and I was doing a lot of hypnosis. And I told a friend of mine that he was going to see flying saucers to starboard that night when he was on watch. It wasn't a smart thing to do uh, because he saw flying saucers at starboard and he woke up the captain at three in the morning, got everybody on the bridge looking at those things he saw over there that weren't there, but they were real to him. So what are we talking about? We're talking about ghosts, okay? And how did those ghosts get there? I put them in his subconscious mind, okay? So the Holy Ghost is referring to the subconscious mind. The Holy Spirit is the conscious mind. So, seeing you purified your soul, Scripture says, listen to the Scriptures, seeing you purified your soul in the disciplining of your spirit. Oh, they're talking about soul and spirit. It's separate now. Notice that? In the unfeigned love of your brother. What does unfeigned mean? It means not fake. You know, it's not like the salesman that's got a gift for you because I love you but I want you to buy my product. That's not, not real love, is it? It's phony. So when it says, I've seen you purified your soul in the unfeigned love, in, in discipline of your spirit, means discipline in your conscious, willful mind, protecting the soul from defilement. The soul is a subconscious mind. It's feminine receptive. The subconscious believes all things, trusts all things. It's like a good woman. It believes it all until it gets screwed over. Believes all things, trusts all things, and then what? and it puts it into your physical form, okay? There's only one unpardonable sin, the Bible said. I used to read that and I think, God, I'm in prison, I've done everything that can be done for a man to be bad. I've, it's all on public record for me. What else could have I done that I could have ever not done this one? And it said there's only one unpardonable sin. It's called blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And what does blasphemy mean? I don't know. Curse. You blasphemer, you're cursing. And I used to read that and think, well, I wonder what that means. It's so clear to me. It means to curse your own soul, to blaspheme your soul. Okay? The only unpardonable sin is to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Meaning this, that if you plant the seed with a word, like, I am sick and tired of you, you just put that in your subconscious mind. The reason it's unpardonable is because it's a seed that's planted. Now it's got to come to fruition. And it's going to manifest in your life. Always. Yeah. So, it's unpardonable in that sense. Okay? It's not like eternal damnation and all this kind of stuff the church would have you believe. We have eternal damnation in this lifetime, right now in this present. Eternity is right now and here in the present, but nobody's here. Very few people are in the present. And you can't be in his presence unless you're in the present. Most people are not here. You know where they're at? They're thinking about what they did yesterday. They gotta get the bread later. Gotta go be sure and stop by and get some milk. They're not even here. And because they're not here, they don't know what's going on around them and in them. They're not in touch with themselves. And they can't know God, let alone can they know anything else. They can't know what I'm telling you right now. Why? Because they're not here. Oh, that's called attention deficit disorder. Let's give them some rattling. Because we never taught our children how to meditate, reflect, and concentrate and focus. That's true. So let's just give them a pill and it'll help them do that. 
The word no, K-N-O-W, has now in it, doesn't it? Has now what? It has now in it. So a good student is here now. He's listening and learning. He's picking everything up, right? A poor student isn't. He's not even here. Yeah, he's off somewhere else, daydreaming. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And we've done it. We were kids. We don't. We have good imaginations as children, you know? And we'd be flying on a flying carpet. I mean, we might, who knows where we are as children. And we don't know how to channel that as teachers and as educators. They've never learned. That's why there's some gifted schools like Montessori's and others that have learned to kind of not, not to destroy all that in a child. Anyway, we're not getting into educational stuff, but so let's look at this. The spirit is the conscious mind. The soul is the subconscious. The body is where it goes to. If you look at these symbols, this is the circle with a dot in it. It's the symbol of the sun. The double crescent is the moon. If I put this crescent on top of this one here, on this cross, what do I have? The symbol of Jupiter. And Jupiter is the compassionate one, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's where it came from, the archetype. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In your chart, you all have Jupiter, I have Jupiter. I can tell a lot about your view of life, your perspective. I can tell what your optimisms are and what your pessimisms are. I can tell where your faith and your, your doubts are. Because I can also find Saturn, who has a crescent underneath here, which is the domination of the cross over the soul. Satan, Saturn, the devil, has no feeling because the world controls it. The physical world dominates the soul, the feelings. So there's no compassion there. It's my desires, my physical desires, more important than anything else. It doesn't matter about your feelings or what you feel. I want to get my whatever it is I want. You see, so all this is. In, this, in the planet symbols. If I took it, Venus is a, is a circle over a cross. Venus. you all seen that symbol, right? Venus is love, we say, right? Okay? What's dominating it? This love, the spirit, is dominating the flesh. The flesh, the, the body. All this stuff over here, the desires. The spirit's on top of all that in Venus. Mars is an arrow on top, but it's really a cross. We use an arrow. And that's what? That's the body dominating the spirit. Mars says, let's get it on. Venus says, no, no, no. Let's put love first. Oh, such contradictions. Which is going to win? The pushy Mars that's going to demand itself, you know? Or is Venus? Let's put love first. This is all this, all the planets are made up of these three symbols. Okay? So Neptune is a crescent being pierced by the, by the cross. Mm -hmm. And that Neptune is a sign of uh, nuns, priests, uh, martyrs, people that give their life and for in suffering and pain for God's sake, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, or they're just martyrs. They like to be, oh, poor me. Mm -hmm. You know, I have Neptune when I was born on my cross in my chart. And I spent a lot of years, poor me, poor Ron, oh, I don't deserve this. And I deserve every bit of it. <laughs> you know? So we need to learn, recognize these planets all have a message in them, okay? And uh, that's why you study astrology, astrology. And then it opens you up to the greater mysteries of your own soul and your own being and understanding yourself. There's not a better path. And it's very metaphysical. It's not all about, yeah. you know, um, you know, I did this the last class I did two weeks ago. I had a class and I woke up. I didn't wake up. I was that night before the class. I started getting all these thoughts about what, what am I going to teach the students tomorrow? And I was teaching them the new technique that I developed called the Cosmic Key, which uh, I just published the book on. And, uh, and uh, it's amazing. It's so accurate. It's scary. It's scary, scary. The people knew what I had. They knocked my doors down to get to me. Seriously, it's that accurate. It's scary accurate. So anyway, so here, I, I'm, this is it. Midnight, midnight. And I'm writing all this on a board trying to say, how can I show them how, how Venus and Mars work together if they're together? It's called a love-hate relationship. If you have your chart, it's they're together. That means you, my ex-wife is like that. She is, 
Yeah, when you're hot and cold. Yeah. yeah, it's mm -hmm. back and forth. So, and it's also can be possessive and jealous, okay? Because mm -hmm. Venus wants to possess, it's what it's all about. And, but Mars is jealous, it's angry, quick to anger, see? So people that have those in their chart, if, you, if you're looking in a relationship, you say, I wonder if this guy's good for me. Well, I teach my women in my classes, I say, look, I'd always avoid this particular aspect or that one. Be careful with Mars, Pluto, and Saturn, because these are aspects that if, you, if they're crucified in a chart, it's going to show a person's unforgiving, because Saturn doesn't forget. Saturn lives in the past. He does? Yeah. He's so sweet. He lives in the past. Okay, what, what does Saturn say? Saturn, remember Christ said, you know who was Satan in the Bible? The disciple? The falling angel. He was, good for you, but who was the disciple? Oh, 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 oh. It was oh, Peter. Ah. Peter. Peter. Yeah. Peter was the disciple that was the cursing. Remember, Satan the devil is called the accuser of our brother, and he who accused our brother before God both day and night. The spirit of Satan the devil, the serpent, is in all of us that when we accuse others. Mm -hmm. And impatience is one of the least virtuous things there is. Impatience. Patience is the first virtue of love. Did you know that? Getting better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Patience is the first That's virtue it. of love. Yeah. If you, if you read the Bible. Okay. So the worst virtue is what? Impatience. And who's impatient? Italians. <laughs> That's that's a good answer. Good answer. Okay. So so here's the here's the message in all this, okay? It's listen to this listen to this Bible verse. Listen to this scripture here. You know, the the church would have you believe something different about yeah. this. It said this it says the devil rages for he knows he has but a short time. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see it? Yeah. So people say God's within. I say, where do you think the devil is? You ever seen a man that's raging angry because you haven't got ready in time or you're not getting uh -huh. out the door on time? Yeah. <laughs> he wanted the medium suitcase, but he knew he wanted the large one, but he asked for the medium one, and so then you asked for the large one. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you know what? She's had to live with a yeah. man that's being patient, too. Uh, the whole thing is we have that quality sometimes. We, we yeah. were impatient, you know. I have Mars for my son, so I can be impatient, and I get quick to anger. I know, it's my spirit. Mars scores Mercury, my speech. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to speak too fast, even up here you can hear it. My wife will say, it's time for you to eat, Ron, slow down, stop, you know. She thinks the best way to my mind is my stomach, and mm -hmm. it's true. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we have those qualities that are inherent in our being, and we can even know what they're there, doesn't mean we can always control them and curb them, okay? So, Saturn, in a chart afflicting or conjunct of Jupiter. The past and the future are in conflict here. Uh, depression is Saturn. Uh, Jupiter is kind of manic depression if you have them together. One moment you're high as a kite and you're optimistic and everything looks great. The next moment you're down mm -hmm. and depressed. Okay? And uh, that can be uh, hard to live with. Okay? So, moon afflicting Mercury. It can be, the moon is the child in us. It's the, the, the part of us that needs nurturing, needs to be, to be fed the milk of the mother, okay? It's like, what did you do when you were a child and you cried, your mom put a breast in your mouth, right? Mm -hmm. So that helped comfort you. So what do we do now? We get a little upset, we get angry, or we get distressed, go to the refrigerator. You go to the refrigerator. <laughs> and we start looking for something yeah. to eat, to nurture ourselves, right? Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. And so when we have that conflict, like down here, if you have a sun afflicting moon in a chart, that tells me you have a lot of conflict between the will, the sun, and the emotions, the feelings, which is the moon, and the moon is also your habits. Okay? Sow a thought, you reap an act. You sow an act, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. You sow a character, you reap your destiny. Mm -hmm. But the habits start in our thinking. Mm -hmm. and our process of repeating something over and over again until it becomes habitual. Whether it's smoking a cigarette, you know, eating regularly, things we shouldn't be eating, all those things are habitual patterns. And that's the moon in us, okay? So in our chart, if I see you have an affliction with the moon and sun, I understand I there's the wills at war with the feelings and emotions, and that's who's going to win generally, not the will. Oh, like the sun, no, not the moon. the moon is with Saturn in mine, I think. Yeah, well, see, you, that shows depression, depression potential. Yeah, exactly. fighting depression emotionally, trying to stay above that, okay? Um, and, and having no emotional tolerance for criticism. Hmm. The accuser. I must be the same then, because that is a pet peeve of mine. Well, we could look yeah. at it. Yeah, we, 
but, but the thing is that when you're doing a chart and you're doing astrology, you have these insights into not only yourself, but you have it into others. Mm. I mean, it enhances life. It makes you aware of things that you never could be in tune with. You know about that person. Uh, you know, that's the, you know, she's, she's going to be my, you know, private student. I've got private students around the world that I've had that I'm teaching. Mm. She's got to get online with me. I, I, that's why I'm doing this partly today. I want to reunite her. Get her back on track with me. <laughs> she can do it. And, uh, you can do it. She can do it. Okay. So, so, <laughs> in, so if you see if you see a Mars Saturn affliction in a chart, that's somebody that gets angry, but also holds on to it. Doesn't want to. Always lives in the past. You always and you never. I said those words to my wife last night when I got angry. You always and you never. It's so the most destructive words. two words there yeah. are in the language. You said that to her. I, can you, you believe that? You. you I know really it. I, can you believe I did that? Mouth. I know it. I know it. What the heck? I know. It. And you know what? And she she would have loved for you to have been here when I said that. <laughs> tiss, tiss. Like, you know it. She knows I it. Oh, she, it right in his but place. But she, <laughs> right? she knows better to push my button though. She'll say, oh, if your students ordered you now. That's right. <laughs> you know what? You, but everybody it's the emotion, it's the quick it, I know, I know. Yeah. But but it's Ah, oh, what did she say? 2% of the Italian and you said 2%. 2%? <laughs> I've only got 2%, huh? Yes, luckily. <laughs> <percent, huh? laughs> Somebody slipped between those sheets. 2%? 2%. He could have done better than that. Gosh. Uh, well, <laughs> Juicy, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so these are just, this is, like you see somebody with a Saturn-Pluto affliction, you know they have secrets in sexual area. Sex is Pluto. Saturn, I know, there's always an affliction though. Like, the afflictions are squares, oppositions. There's, there's there are the aspects. They form but, crosses in a chart. So, but, oh, all right. So it depends on if your birthday depends on where, where those planets are in your chart. And, and if they're crossing, then it's an affliction. Exactly. Or okay. they form a cross. It says you're star-crossed lovers. You heard of that expression? Oh, that's where they came from. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, you know, and, and funny, we even use words like, how come you're so cross? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about yeah. that. Why do, I just thought of that. I never heard sure. of that before. Well, that, yeah, see? Why did, yeah. Where'd that come from, right? Spirit. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, you're so cross. I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could put that in my yeah. book. Anyway, 